Uh, hi, so I just finished making one video. I don't know if I'm actually going to upload it, but that's what I just did. Um, I was um, Now I'm going to make another video on a slightly different topic. And it's sort of based on a, um, how I was feeling yesterday and then a conversation that I had with my sister, which was really interesting. And it lasted quite a few hours. Um, but So, I don't know, I was feeling a little bit shit yesterday. Um... Like maybe a little bit depressed and I started like asking myself why. Uh, one explanation is period because that does make people feel shit. Uh, but then I think there's probably more to it than that. So I was sort of like speculating ideas and one conclusion I came to, not just about me but people in general, is that we're constantly consuming and we're never really creating. So, like, when we create something, we're putting a piece of ourself into the world. We're creating almost a material manifestation of a, of an otherwise abstract idea or thought. And, and that is essentially part of us. And it, like, by creating, it gets us to know ourselves because we see, we see the things of which we're creating and it's no longer just unmanifested potential it's it becomes actual um and we can we can almost experience that and allow other people to experience that but i think the most important thing is actually the process of creating and i think this is actually quite a buddhist idea because in buddhism I think I'm gonna get this right. They, they, so they, they draw um, massive intricate mandalas in the sand, um, like just with sticks and stuff. And then when, as soon as they're finished, they just wipe them away because, like, the whole idea is it's about the process of creation rather than the, the admiring the end product, um, and. I quite like that idea because I think the process of creation is probably one of the most important parts because without the process you don't actually have an end product but then again that's treating the end product as as the ultimate thing I don't know I just don't feel like we know anything like we ever seen we ever seen all some things just not a lot of things and I think we have to recognise that. Like, I can sit and I can talk right now. But am I actually going to tell you anything new? Or am I just going to keep trying to make sense of this experience that I'm having? In this room. And how should I... Should, how should I perceive this experience? How should I make the best of it and why would I assume that making the best of it is the good thing to do I think making the best of it is the best thing to do because it just makes sense I don't know it's just an intuitive thing it's better to be good than bad it's better to perceive things good than perceive things bad or maybe it's better to perceive things honestly. But I don't think perceiving things honestly is always um, a black and white uh, decision. It's not like something is overtly bad or overtly good. Often it's the way, it's the filter and the lens that we perceive things through that, that makes it out to be that way. So, so my experience right now is me sat in a room um, talking to a phone. And I don't know, and there's there's a lot more to it than that. Obviously, my body position, um, the things around my room, just all the drawings and stuff, and yeah. So there's a lot to it, but is my perception a product of the environment I'm in right now, or is it just something within me? Because I don't have any doubt that we interact with the environment around us. 
and I don't have any doubt that the environment around us influences the way that we think. And I think that's obvious because people who've had shitty upbringings generally grow up to be shitty people. Um, they they may grow up to be um narcissistic or sociopathic and end up doing bad things. And in the same way that people who've had good upbringings in a good environment whereby the parents may have been working and and they've had a proper socialisation, those children grow up more often than not to be more successful. And and I, f- I would say probably more generally happy as well. So I think the environment does impact us in ways that we can't necessarily control. Um, but is it the same? Like, Because obviously with socialisation, I know that the first five years of life are the most important in, um, in the socialisation process of a child. Um, and I get that. But... Could you then make that logical leap to say that the environment affects us in the here and now? Um, so not just a product of our past environment, but the environment that we are currently in. And I think you probably could say that. However, I think we're maybe still um, living in the legacy of our um, past socialisation. Maybe, maybe our socialisation has led to the filter in which we used to perceive the current environment. So, and I think there's is not just a sociological element to that, but also maybe a biological element, um, in that we're wired in a certain way, that we need certain necessities or requisites in order to be able to um, function in certain ways. Because at the end of the day, we're animals and we just, we just need certain things things in in place in order to be able to function like proper human beings and maybe we're we're missing some of that but my point is that like do I don't don't even I can't even describe how I'm experiencing the environment right now like I feel like I'm experiencing the environment slightly more slightly differently to how I was maybe two minutes ago in making this video and I think that's because I've grown an awareness to it. I've become more aware about the room that I'm in. And I'm actively thinking about it and talking about it. So it's almost manifesting in my mind in a different sort of way to just being completely com- complacent um, to these four walls around me. Um, it's like, it's actually, what what is the door? <laughs> Why is the door the way it is? Why does it look that way? Why is it? brown why does it have blue ink all over it why is why and I could answer a lot of those questions the door's brown because someone put a brown door in why did they choose a brown door maybe that was the only door they had at the time in the shop because it's quite an old house and I'm assuming quite an old door um And I know why it's got blue ink all over it. And that's because I was feeling creative. So I decided to pour blue ink all over my door a few years ago. Um, I don't know, it might have been one year ago, two years ago. I can't exactly remember. But that's what happened. Um, and it has little drawings on it because I was feeling creative as well. So I decided to draw on my door because why not I've drawn on every other place in my room so why not pick the door um but yeah I think I think it's almost like a meditative activity when you become aware of the room around you you almost you don't just try and pin a label to it which I know is exactly what I've just been doing but you actually look at it and you experience it for what it is. I know you can't really see my door right now, but it's over there. So you might be able to see what I mean. By it being covered in blue ink and... Yeah. It's also broken. The top hinge has fallen off, so... I have to be careful when I open it. 
I don't know. I've got all these books on the bookshelf that I feel like I need to read. And I know that one thing I need to do, I need to not do, but I'll say it in the positive, is quit smoking. Um, so, because I know smoking's bad. I know smoking causes cancer. And I know it's illogical of me to do something which is going to potentially destroy my life when I'm older. Because it's almost, <clears throat> it's almost quite hedonistic to smoke. Because it might give you a little buzz in the moment. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the future implications it can have on your health and well-being. And I think that's something that we should try to avoid. Because the way in which smoking actually affects cancer patients and is can be actually can be absolutely tremendous and I'm not saying that in a good sense, I'm saying it in a bad sense in that it impacts all areas of life, it causes the family to suffer, it causes the individual who's experiencing the cancer to suffer and it's just probably not that great and I think it's interesting as to why people smoke so I was watching um, a video yesterday, I don't know what the name of the guy was who was doing it, but he was doing like a hypnosis sort of class and he was looking at reading people and he, he talked about, I think it's called the Chinese face and I don't know if it, that's exactly what it's called, but it's like, I think it's a Chinese idea and it's, it's the idea of the different lines on your face, they tell different stories, so people who have them um, extremely prominent lines down here have generally suffered a lot of grief so they're, they're probably still depressed and their face is, is representing that and then you can have like different lines around here I've got one line down there I can't remember what that meant exactly I think it meant that you're hedonistic but I'm not sure but apparently your lines don't start coming out until you're like 20 but I'm, I'm 19 there's, there's other lines as well like so if you've got um, quite a prominent line going up there which I don't know if I do yet but I don't know if I ever will neither but it means you've been through something profound which has increased your wisdom and changed you and it, I was really sceptical when I was watching this but in a way it makes sense and he, he did cite some studies to, to back up um, what he was saying so I assume there's some credibility to it and I think it makes sense that there's some credibility to it because when we go through something emotionally, it changes us physically. So for example, if someone's depressed, then that's going to affect the muscles in their face and the muscles in their body. So the more likely to walk differently, the more likely to walk slouched over and that can often lead to bad posture and I've got bad posture probably due to being depressed when I was a teenager um yeah um and it, it also affects the emotions in which you're expressing your face and I think emotion emotional expression is is extremely complex um and I, I've noticed what he was saying before because I feel like sometimes I look in the mirror and my face physically changes it looks like it looks as though I'm looking at a different person and this is generally when I'm in different sort of moods or different sort of mindsets. Um, I can look in the mirror and sometimes I like what I see, sometimes I don't like what I see. But it's always the same person that I'm looking at but it, it changes because because it's like our face changes and I, I don't always understand it, like I don't I don't get it, like I look at myself now and it's like I don't know, I think I think I look alright. Like I don't know. It's just it's weird. But yeah, so when when we feel certain emotions or when we go through certain things in life, it causes different muscles to become more prominent in our face or be or be used more in, in our face. Um so for example when people are happy a lot their eyes are smiling, so they're more likely to get wrinkles around these sorts of areas. Um, 
but when people go through maybe a lot of sadness or grief or whatever they're more likely to have like lines down here because when you're sad you sort of point downwards I've got a little line down there I don't know uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's it was quite interesting, um. But at the time of me watching it, I wasn't really feeling mega happy, um. But I did get happier because I went in the bath and I wrote, um, a lot, about about a lot of things, um. Some of which I think I talked about at the start of this video, just about the creativity and stuff, um. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's best for people. And I don't know if I can generalise like that. But I don't know what's best for me. Because <clears throat> I, I know some things that are best for me that I shouldn't smoke. So that's something I should just stop. And I know that I can go cold turkey on that because I've done it before. And I replaced it with running instead. But I've sort of got a bad ankle at the minute still. Um, I don't know why it's still like that, but I don't know how. Yeah. I just want to be like a good person and do good things and do meaningful things and just not be a waste in life. And I know I can do that. I know that I'm capable of doing that, but I know that I have to do certain things in order to become that. Um, and I think it's sort of like an Aristotelian sort of idea in that like people are defined by their actions. But I think Aristotle said that the good person won't even contemplate or consider doing the bad thing. They will just know instantly what is the right thing to do and they'll do it without thought. Um, and obviously that's maybe a little bit idealistic and a little bit contradictory to human nature but um i think the whole idea behind it is people are essentially defined by their actions so if so a good person is one who practices doing good things and i think where aristotle was coming from was if if we do keep doing good things then eventually it'll become almost like our second nature just to do that it will just be like oh better do that thing because that's what happens when we practice something so much. It'll just become um, a part of ourselves. And we can either practice doing good things or practice doing bad things. And I think sometimes it's almost easier to do the bad things. And um, by bad things, I don't necessarily mean overtly immoral things like murder and, and stealing and, and things like that. I mean more small things, which are much easier to happen on a daily basis, like evasion of responsibility um, procrastination from things that we ought to be doing to do things that may be a little bit more fun but and I wouldn't say that they're overtly bad um, so for example sitting and watching the TV for prolonged periods of time so it's not it's not like oh I'm not hurting anybody um, but that's going to have an impact on, on you when in the future because you realise that all the time all the hours you spent in front of the TV, you could have spent doing something more productive and building a life for yourself. And you didn't. And that's not going to be a good feeling. And you know it's not going to be a good feeling because you, you've been there before. You've, you've had to... You've evaded revising for a test. So you could watch TV or play games on your phone or... Or go out with your friends. And then when it's come to taking the test. You haven't had the necessary information at hand. Because you haven't learned it. And you failed the test. And almost it's like taking a test is like a microcosm. Or a microcosmic representation of, of the bigger picture. Um, Only with a test it's like. So you, you do the bad action. You take the test, you fail the test. So the bad action in this sense is not revising. But in the bigger picture of life, it's like, it's not so obvious when we do fail because obviously it carries 
it carries on over a bigger time scale. So I think when we do fail, it's not so obvious as to the reasons why we fail. So it might be because of little things we do every day, like watching TV and and doing mindless things which don't necessarily um, aren't necessarily conducive to promoting a better future for ourselves. And then when that future does come, even though the future never really comes, it's like we we never got there. We we didn't get to the place where where we maybe wanted to get. And perhaps that's because we didn't have a goal. And I think I think we do need a goal because. I can't remember this quote exactly, but it's any why overcomes any how. Um, so we may not necessarily know how we're going to get somewhere, but if we can figure out why we want to get somewhere, then the, then the how will fall into place. So we just have to know why we want something, and if we can establish some sort of motivation, um, which then we can latch onto and just allow ourselves to drive forward, then that's going to get us to where we want to be. And I think for now that my goal is going to be to get to university um and and do philosophy and just and just try and enjoy it and i feel like i will enjoy it when i'm there um because i like being in that sort of environment um and if i do get off off the rails over the next year which i'm going to try not to actually that can be my goal to stay on the rails with philosophy to make a timetable and i'm there's a part of me saying i'm not going to stick to this step and there's a part of me which actually knows that because of how I've acted in the past when I've made plans. I didn't actually follow through. So I'm going to have to just do that. And I know I can do that. And I will do that. Even though there's that little piece of doubt in my mind. Anyway, I've been recording for like 20 minutes, so I'm going to go now. Um... Yeah, so if you enjoyed watching, then leave a like, uh, subscribe if you're new, and yeah, bye!